Good morning, everyone. When Max first asked us to share our BNE math journey with you, we will admit we were a little bit confused. We sometimes think that the most valuable information that we have to share is what not to do. During our last day together, though, Marianne had made a comment and shared her thought that we very much all needed a safe place to explore ideas and come to new understandings. And this very much resonated with us and our work on the BNE Math Committee. Firstly, because this is very much what we've created, a professional learning community that is a very safe place to challenge our current thinking, try possibilities, sometimes fail, and to celebrate successes. We joke that we're the only committee to ever stop and give money back, but more about that later. Secondly, though, it isn't lost on us that this committee of deep learning is exactly what we hope for our classrooms with our students and their teachers. Our BNE Math Committee really is, in every sense, a mirror of what we have asked our classroom, of our classrooms, a community of authentic inquiry. We're a little bit like the stock exchange. There are ups and downs, but we're always moving forward. In fact, Peter and I met a couple of weeks ago to discuss what we would present to you today. We had it all ready and we had a plan. Then last Wednesday, we had another meeting with our math committee and the wheels fell off the bus. We joked as the committee grappled with new ways of thinking that our improvement planning council meeting presentation was falling apart before our very eyes. Throughout our work though, we have made every effort to include many voices on the family math committee. RSO has always been part of the discussion. Administrators from both elementary and secondary, program consultants, our student achievement officers, our SATs, classroom teachers representing both elementary and secondary, and Nadia from our board research team has also been a great support. We believe that the richness of our discussion is very much influenced by the diversity of perspectives we have around the table. Four years ago, we, spent, we began our initiative that focused on three-part math instruction from late junior into high school. As we began to work on curriculum mapping and three-part structures, we quickly realized that there was much misunderstanding about what inquiry was. This was obviously problematic in implementing three-part structures, so that's when we paused and attempted to focus some mini-lessons on inquiry-based instruction. It did not appear, unfortunately, to help a great deal, and in fear of reinforcing bad practice, we halted our math initiative that year. We sought feedback from the teachers involved um, and consulted with program staff to reevaluate our family plan. When we regrouped and began our second year in the three year plan, we used teacher feedback to cluster schools differently. We focused on very practical math, on very practical math strategies that delved deeply into the areas of math that we felt were critical, very critical to student success in math when we considered it as a developmental continuum number sense, proportional reasoning, and algebraic thinking. The feedback provided us to believe that we are on the right track. Teachers felt that we were providing information that they could immediately take back and implement in the classroom. Uh, in our third year, we simply fine-tuned the plan based on our successes from year two. We included technology as an additional support for math instruction. We increased our pre and post assessment data collection and supported online sharing of student work so that everyone involved could benefit from the learning that was happening in each classroom. Now beginning in the next cycle of learning, we are very aware of the many layers of math support throughout the system. We're working diligently to support and layer our work, taking into consideration provincial initiatives, board level supports, and the renewed math strategy and the various pressures we feel at all levels to enhance our teaching and learning in math to reflect increased achievement in assessments such as EQAO. We sometimes struggle to understand exactly what we can do to affect student achievement and increase teacher efficacy, and that's really what guides our conversation, um, is the confusion on how we can resolve many of the challenges that we have. We at this point in our committee, through courageous conversations, uh, we develop things a lot more readily and uh, the outcomes are yet to be determined, but we're hoping they're positive. <laughs> Although we're feeling a little anxious to get going, we're also confident that slower and steady uh, pace 
is more likely to get us where we need to go. And really, we are making progress, slow progress, and as we speak, we're still working on the plan. We have chosen this year to support the collective thinking <clears throat> of the value in knowing our learners and how we've decided to support this diagnostic assessment through collaborative diagnostic development. Most of our work will revolve around the so what piece in making informed instructional decisions based on diagnostic assessments. Secondary teachers will be effect, uh, integrating effective diagnostic practices throughout their courses far beyond the assessment for pathway placement. The secondary perspective is that our focus this year on junior grades will be reflected in future increases in secondary learning and results. If students arrive on the secondary doorstep with a stronger skill set, we can progress in working towards more advanced and abstract concepts with a higher degree of success. Students will be confident and willing to learn in numeracy without any apprehension. Collectively, we feel it's all of our responsibility that we need to maintain positive language around math and encourage our, our learners to maintain positive feelings about problem solving with numbers. And uh, really, I think we recognize that within our own offices on a daily basis, where we recognize who's got the number sense and who's got the literacy gift, and we really can't be having those conversations in front of our students to ensure that they love numbers and they love math. That's it for our presentation. Thank you very much.